All right, so here's an ICR one. And taking a look at uh, the problem here, trying to find a straight edge. Um, this one, I think this is actually an acceleration problem, but we could do the first part of it as an ICR, right? Um, no, it just asks for the angular velocity, right? So the angular velocity of uh, this, we draw the thing out. And looking at what the velocities they gave us right here, well, first off, we can um, get this guy's uh, velocity. This guy's going at six uh, radians per second. So it's going to have a velocity of B is going to be right there. All right, and so we know the velocity of B is also going to be right there. And... I didn't mean to do that. Where'd you go? Uh, right there. Come on. Purple. Purple. Purple, you bastard. Um, we know that the velocity here has to be in this direction. So the ICR on this one's actually pretty easy, right? Because uh, all you have to do is uh, draw lines. That's the important thing for the ICR, is to draw lines perpendicular to the velocities, right? Don't, because it'd be really, it's really easy sometimes to like uh, um, to just draw a line <laughs> in line with the velocity and, and like think that the ICR is right there. It is not. So the ICR is going to be right here because this and. And then, and looking at this, we could see um, right away that the um, angular velocity is kind of hard to draw it that way. Let's see. I'll try to draw it. The uh, angular velocity of uh, BCD, D, it's going to be in that direction, right? And then you could find with the velocity... Um, I guess we'll draw it in green again. It's going to be like right here. That's going to be the velocity of C. I think I got that right, right? Yeah, sure. So all we had to do was to say that VB is going to be equal to omega AB times the L of AB or 6 times R 200. We could keep it in millimeters, right? So... 1200 millimeters per second and then we could figure out what um, we do a little geometry there or actually we don't need to do much geometry right so because we already just know that the r of b with respect to the icr is just going to be this 150 so we could find that the omega uh, B, C, D is going to be equal to V, B over R, B with respect to I, C, R. Or just the 1,200 divided by 150. And our Hewlett Packard 35S says that's going to be 8. And so that's actually, I think, the answer that they that uh, uh, that they were looking for. But I would probably ask for something a little bit more involved, uh, where I would ask for maybe the velocity of uh, of d, right? Um, so in doing that, um, you could actually ask the velocity of c. If you wanted the velocity of c, you're just going to get um, omega b c d times r c i c r. And we can see that uh, the RC with ICR, it's just going to be, um, double check, yeah, 300. So 300, well, do it in the right order. What you doing, bastard? Why don't you go to that for? What you do that for? A race. 8.00. And... Uh, 300 or 24 
And then a little bit more challenging is if you ask for uh, the velocity at D, now we got to get this distance right there, and that requires us to do a little bit. Not too much, because that's just going to be um, R D with respect to I C R. We would probably take uh, this distance. Well, nope, I'll take that back. This distance, right? That's going to be that distance. So the square root of 100 squared plus 500 squared. Or uh, 509.9. So VD <laughs> is going to be omega BCD times RD with respect to ICR, or 8 times our 509.9 to get uh, 4,079 millimeters per second. And, you know, asking for an ICR, that's uh, too much more difficult than that. It's just kind of cruel. Uh, and if you want to try to ask, you know, especially if, like, the geometries get really weird. Those, those, are, those could be uh, really time-consuming, especially if you're frazzled during an exam, you know. If you get if you get some kind of weird one that goes up like this right here, and we get some kind of weird, you know, triangle that's up into space and there's no right triangles as part of it and now you gotta go law cosines and that kind of thing it can be really irritating um let's see other requests that we had uh let me see what we uh we asked uh for um i'll do a projectile motion in a bit let's go for jonathan wanted an impulse uh and momentum i want to double check it's still being recorded yes we are being recorded okay good so we can go back away go away Boom. Um, so let's see. I don't know if I have one off the top of my head, but we can go back and um, let's see. I will keep keep all this for now. Then you don't need to be that loud. We can all hear you. Let's see. Impulse and momentum. Rigid body impulse and momentum. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah that's what he said. Um, I could just start wandering around the book, but let me uh, use the uh, table of contents instead. Momentum methods. I think this is still, yeah, that's still two uh, dimensional rigid bodies. D'Alembert. I love that guy's name. D'Alembert. Uh, momentum principles right here. So force, linear momentum, moment of angular momentum principles right there. Um, energy and momentum of planar and rigid bodies. So it's probably going to be the, this one in chapter 8, I'm going to guess. Um, so like four, uh, page 415. Ah, making drinking noises. That's rude. Don't be rude. 415. You could just like uh, go on a little bit further. Um, so like this kind of problem uh, uh, right here. Like I think this is a pretty good one. But it's not that much different from other ones that I've done as examples right here. Okay, well you got a coefficient of restitution right here. Ooh, and now... You want to know the total kinetic energy of the sphere and ball after it has been uh, the impact here. Eh, those are all good. Uh, those are all good things uh, to know. But I don't want to spend too much time on any particular problem. But I kind of like that one a little bit. Mm, I don't see any that I that I'm in love with. Boom. This one, this this is an interesting one down here too. Where you get the, you get this bar hitting this other bar. 
It's better when I do these when I have the, the solution. So I'm going to see if I have, I don't even know if I have the solution manuals to these. So uh, let's see, the problem that I just looked at, this is like a pro chapter 8 right here. So I do have the solution manual here. So chapter 8. Um, oh, no, this is might be the ones where they combine statics. Like So, so this is like a newer version right here. Um, I'm going to guess chapter 17. And let me paste this guy in to one here. So it'd be good to just, it's good to just see if I get the right answer or not. All right, stop it. Leave me alone. And he says, can we work through the question from the review packet on page five? Okay, I'll get to that one um, after I, I finish this one up um okay let me just double check this is uh um, we'll see what i say that was problem uh 864 so there'll probably be if it's going to be on if this is the right chapter here oh come on get back over there move move all right um down to 64 they're about 64 and that's rigid bodies yeah, so it's probably going to be um, chapter 19. We're right here in chapter 19. Actually, seems kind of late. Oh, come on. I want instant gratification. Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, they, okay. Yeah, they got it. Yeah, about that. That's cool. All right, so uh, in this problem, it um, a little a little more challenging than was done in uh, the homework problems uh, for in terms of rigid body impact because it um, it doesn't have a pin joint. So you have to kind of, you're, you're gonna end up using uh, two equations or, or two, two methods, and you might actually need uh, three equations. And I believe you do. Okay, so uh, what we have here is, we have this one kilogram sphere, and it's moving at 10 meters per second, and it's gonna strike this four kilogram stationary bar that's two meters uh, uh, long. And with this first one, we want to know if the sphere adheres to the bar, what is the bar's angular velocity after the impact? So uh, what we have going on, what we're going to use is um, the uh, principle of angular uh, momentum. So we have before impact and then after. After. So we have this collision, and that's going to equal to the parts when they get stuck together. So here we go, and they're going to have the mass of A times the velocity of A1, and uh, so that's going for it. And then after the, f we're going to have this kaboom equal and opposite impulses did i mention i have poison ivy a guy from planting wildflowers now it strikes me now that i think about it as a little weird that you would um plant wildflowers right shouldn't they be wild 
mass times uh, um, the of a times velocity of a two. Um, we're also going to have, and we can let's assume, assume counterclockwise. It makes sense that it would be so. It's kind of obvious. We could have the moment of inertia uh, of the bar um, about its center of gravity times its angular velocity. Uh, we could just call it angular velocity too. But we're also going to have, and maybe I want to like leave myself some room here because we're also going to have a, uh, uh, the motion of the center right here. So we're going to go i omega to, and then we're going to have um, the mass of, I guess we could just call it b, because uh, and the velocity of b2. And by that, we mean from the center of mass right here. So uh, we take our impulse and momentum, and we take it about the center of mass to start with, right? So we go the uh, angular momentum before and uh, let's just go center of mass, maybe. One uh, plus the sum of the uh, moments uh, dt, right? Um, and that is a vector. So I almost gave it a hat on accident. It's going to be equal to the sum of the angular momentums about the center of mass afterwards. And got to remember these are vectors. So we take a look and uh, on, on here in the beginning, we have mass of A, velocity of A1, and we're going to uh, pretend like it hits right there on the tip, right? So that's going to be, we'll just say LB over 2. And it's going to be positive because that is, counter, that is, that is counterclockwise, right? If you were to draw, you know, we, we take, take that as if it's going about the center right there. Um, and then we get to the, the middle diagram and there's nothing there because these are uh, opposite from each other, equal and opposite. Then we get over to the left hand side and we're going to have our, the mass of uh, A times the velocity of A2, once again, LB over 2, right? And, and, but then we're also going to have the mass moment of inertia right there so we could find that mass moment of inertia by the way we could just do that over onto the side we could have done it right away 1 12th m l b squared and the mass what i say it was four and the bar was two squared um should be able to do that in my head but i can't 16 by by 12 that's like 4.667 kilogram meter squared um, and so as we stick stuff in here we um, let's see what how much he he weigh how much says it is one kilogram and he's going 10 and he's two over two it's gonna be equal to the mass is four nope it's still two it, uh, still one uh, VA two um, 2 over 2 plus 4.667 and times omega 2, right? So um, I like to put that's just going to equal to 10. It's going to be equal to VA2 plus the 4.667 omega 2. And that's going to be the first equation that we get. Now we need it. We need another equation. Where are we coming up? I got I have a uh, another thing. Oh, you think it's 1.333? I think I bet you're right. Right? Cuz it shouldn't it be 16 divided by yeah, 12. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. I don't know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the calculator's sticky or something. I don't know. Thank you. 1.333. Oh, and and uh uh I don't think I mentioned that the, this this problem is not in the solution manual, so we'll have to like go about uh, n never really knowing. We could probably just search it on Chegg and find it on Chegg. Um, let's see. Okay, and then uh, uh, so we have one equation, we have two unknowns, and we need to relate v a and uh, omega two uh, together. So, um, uh, but but uh, v a two. But we know that they're going to stick. 
Um, what we could also do, um, if we were going to do this properly, uh, to, just to just to make sure that you know how to do it properly, we the other equation we would need is the coefficient of restitution, right? Where we would say e is going to be equal to um, the relative velocity after divided by negative relative velocity before. Or you could say it the other way, negative velocity after divided by the re relative velocity before. And we want to be careful because I used up here, I used VB to represent the center of the mass of this thing, um, which isn't necessarily going to be true, right? It's... Uh, uh, well, no, no, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not, it's not, it will be true. But what I would rather do is also define a point on the bar as as something. So I'm I'm just I'm just going to pick C, right? And so so those are the points that we have to use for a coefficient of restitution. It's very important. So we could say the VC two minus V a2, because those are the things in, uh, impacting, VA1 minus VC1. Now, it just so happens uh, as part of this that uh, VC1 is going to be zero. And we know that um, what happens, okay, if the sphere adheres, that means that that's, E is going to be equal to zero in this case right here, this first part. That means that we, that we could just look at the top of it and we could just say that VC2 is equal to VA2 and we didn't need the coefficient of restitution to know that. We, we would know that they would stick to each other and they would stick, okay? So, uh, but that right there is like the formal thing that, that, that helps us if we have something that's a little more complicated than that first problem. And so now what we could do is we could say that we know uh, in terms of the bar, right, that we're spinning right here, that, that this point right here is a VA2 a is going to be uh, equal to VC2 right here. So here's your VA2. Uh, uh, but we also have a VB2. Right, so that's that, that that's like the confusing thing here. Um, we might we might if we were if we if we were just not thinking if we're just going uh, on cruise control we might say well say say you know th this is this is dumb guy right here he, th th this is confused guy he thinks well isn't um, uh, just uh, VA2 equal to omega 2 times L over 2. Is that true? Anybody? Just say no. No, it's not. Because this is a rigid body and it's not a constrained problem. So it is translating. And it will translate like VB2, or it'll, well, it'll, it'll, it'll translate by it any way that you, you want it to. Uh, so it has a kinematics relationship. Something like that, spelled like that. That's going to be equal to some reference plus the angular velocity thing. That's, that's the thing that's going to tie these two together. These two are related by more than just um, uh, uh, something simple like this. So what we'd say is like, well, we'll pick one as being the, the reference. Let's pick VB2. Let's pretend that we know that. So we put them in both in both places. So there's VB2. And there's VB2 right here. So that means we're going to pin it at VB2, and it's going to rotate, we presume, this amount, omega 2. So now we're going to have a V uh, uh, A with respect to B, right? And that, that is equal to omega 2 
LB over 2. So we know that VA2 is equal to VB2 plus omega 2 LB over 2. And that is our second equation. But unfortunately, we've now introduced an extra variable. So what do we do about that? We have two equations and two unknowns. What do we do? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Take a guess. Well, we have two equations and three unknowns. VA2, omega2, and VB2. Yeah, almost everything's moving in the x direction. I didn't give myself enough room. Oh, you know what I could do? Maybe? Hmm. Is this going to be a cheat? Is this going to work? <laughs> I'm a cheater. See, I should be doing all this in OneNote. So a couple of my um, uh, felt colleagues have been using OneNote instead of... Um, but I like the fact that I get a little bit more on the page when I do this with um, uh, here. Well, I have another principle that I, I must have forgotten until now. Linear momentum. This would remember this was angular momentum. This is angmom. We got linmom. So we can write for the same diagram right up here. It's just do it. You know, we could say the sum of the uh, mo mo uh, uh, linear momentum. Just call this L one uh, uh, plus the. Uh, I could say the summation or the integral of f dt is going to be equal to the sum of the linear momentums after the time. So we have mass of A times velocity of A1 plus zero, equal and opposite right here. It's going to be equal to ma va2 plus mb v b2 we have a third equation yay so now we have three equations and three unknowns we can solve it do i need to solve it to take the time to actually throw numbers into this or do you think you could solve it now we could use our time more efficiently i think maybe to go to another pro type of problem The big thing that I want, the big thing, big knowledge thing. Rigid bodies. Trans and rot. Keep in mind, both of those things are taking place, translation and rotation. So we did the rot up here. Now we could do the trans down here. And we could tie them together with kinematics and some principle that we know of. So we could actually, so, so when we get to, and the reason why we even wrote this one down is because we could change the problem, right? And have the E, have the coefficient of restitution. Now we're gonna, then we'd be able to have a, uh, another, there would be another equation that we would need to know that would be uh, for VC, right? That we, we would, but we, we were able to, and I guess we still kind of have, this is actually probably the third equation. This is probably the fourth equation, right? Because VC was one of the unknowns that we had right in there. 
but I didn't I didn't number them that way so are we good does that make sense to everybody anybody Sydney says yes okay was at least one person if you didn't understand it, if there's some, you got some question about it, or you thought about, well, how was I supposed to know that? How was I supposed to think that way? It's totally a fair question. It, 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 this is, uh, it's not necessarily obvious. When you see the answer, it's obvious. But it's like the mindset, the kind of the thought process of like, if I get stuck somewhere, not to just uh, throw your hands up in the air, but to just start thinking through, go down the list. What do I know? What do I know? What do I know? What are the keys? What are the what are the things that could be stumbling blocks? And so that's why I'm making this thing right here. That's why I'm jumping on this, putting stars next to it. That would be that's how you would know to do that on the exam. You would go and you would get stuck and say, "Damn, I got too many unknowns. What else do I know? What else do I know?" Oh yeah, it's a rigid body. It is translation and rotation. So what does that mean? Oh yeah. I could do linear velocity, uh, linear momentum as well. All right, so let's see. The uh, I'll, I'll beat that one in the ground. Okay, um, we had someone asking for what did we say? Can we do the question from review packet on page five? We'll do some angular acceleration stuff coming up too. So which one's the uh, page five? Let's see, you see, could we do the question on the review back page? For, I, I don't have them numbered correctly on mine. That one, work and energy. Yeah, I wrote this problem. You know, I younger me. It wasn't that long ago. I guess it was six years ago. Time has flown. And let's see, how many pages, I did multiple pages in the answer, okay. I thought of this as the kitchen sink one. Um, these kitchen sink ones take a lot of time. And they're not very nice. But let's see, it's a working energy. And we have a 60 pound wheel with a radius of two feet. And it rolls on its hubs, which are have a radius of six inches. Uh, down the inclined um, uh, rails without slipping under the action of an applied cable, right? So this cable is uh, is being pulled out. It's got and, and the tension. Somebody's doing a good job, and they're keeping that of 16 pounds. Uh, it's pulling against a spring that's 12 pounds per foot. I put them in pounds per foot instead of pounds per inch, just to be a nice guy. The cable unwraps from the wheel as it rolls. Okay, so this is, if you could picture what that looks like, right? That looks like, this actually looks like a drum, right? Where it's got like, uh, of, of cable, um, you know, you could think of it as a, uh, 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 and, and it's got like a, like these little, like kind of like things sticking out the side of them. And it's really on this that it's going down, right? It, it, I didn't do a good job of drawing that other side right there. But the, it's on these little rails and somehow somebody's pulling this cable and keeping it with a constant tension as the thing's rolling. Um, and I also give you that the radius of the gyration of the wheel uh, and its hubs is eight inches. Uh, the wheel is released from rest when the spring is unstretched. Okay, so uh, at least I did that for you. And uh, so we want to find the length of the cable. See, now, now this is not something I, that uh, uh, 2020 Ted would uh, ask you. Uh, I'd just ask you probably the last thing, and you'd have to think your way through. But here back then, I was like, I want to make it easier to grade, because then I could just like figure out what they got wrong by like asking each of these things right there. But I think it, it, it requires more understanding and knowledge to just ask you the, the last thing, and then you got to think of all the other stuff. So the length of the cable measured from A that is unwrapped from the wheel after it has moved six feet down the rails, right? So here's the six feet that it's moving right there. So really all we're doing is we're trying to remember that it's going to be like the amount of circumferences, if you will, uh, of that hub that's going on right there. So 
um, if we wanted to get the circumference of something, we would take, you know, if we want to figure out the, the length of it, I'll go delta S is going to be the uh, delta theta times the R, the radius of the thing, right? R times theta in radians equals the arc length of, of the thing. So we could get the delta theta by taking the distance that travels divided by R, or we just take the six feet that's moved divided by the radius, and of course that has to be in uh, feet, and so we get 12 radians. 12, that says radians, that's a rad right there. That's rad, right? So, oh wait, I said 12, yeah, but then the cable uh, unwraps around the wheel, right? And the wheel has a radius of two feet. So uh, we, if we wanna get the, uh, the length of the cable, the delta L, is going to be that delta theta times, and I guess I should write this as the hub, times the R of the drum. What did I call it? The wheel, I guess. I should have called it a drum. Uh, so this is the 12 times, and this is a two, two foot right there. So it's 24 uh, feet. Just geometry. And then the tension um, force... Uh, is constant and acts along uh, the distance right here. So the external work that's being applied right here is going to be, you know, if we, we were put the thing horizontal right here, is here's the end of the cable and we put that force and the tension on it and that, that it, where we're gripping it, right? We can think about where, if we're gripping it at a particular point and moving it to right there, this is the distance that the thing is gonna move, that, that, uh, that it's unstretched right there. So uh, that's going to be um, uh, the, the U1 to 2, the work, the tension of the cable times the delta of the length right there. So uh, that's going to be um, 16 times uh, 24, right, because the cable. You know, and I might even actually, you know, I start to ask myself, like, yeah, but you've had, but the thing is also translated. Should I, hmm, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have right here. This is the external work, but I could start to argue with myself. I'll, I'll let it go. I had a team of experts that uh, agreed with me uh, on this, but I could start arguing the point because I, the thing is going to translate and going to move. So if you unstretch the cable, you should also be the amount of distance that it moved, huh? Interesting. I'll have to give that some more thought. Um, no, no, it's fine. That this is fine. This is correct. I'm, I'm just thinking, I try, try to put it into terms of like, yeah, yeah, that's going to be right. And, okay, so the potential energy that's going to change uh, right here, the, the PE, that's going to change. Um, so the, poten the potential energy at state one, right? So that's just going to be uh, this distance to this distance right there. So we really have to take, um, let me see. Now my mind is all like thinking about like trying to argue this thing. Um, so the potential energy at state one is going to be, well, you could have the gravity potential energy and the spring potential energy, but the spring is unstretched. So what we're going to do here. Okay. So, uh, oh, and it does tell me using the datum as a reference. So it already gave me that datum. So there you go. That's easy enough. That's just MG. Uh, we could call it Y1 if we want to, and the mg, oh, it's in feet, I mean, it's in pounds, right? So the whole drum uh, weighs, what's the drum weigh? Where does that go? 60? It's a 60 pound wheel, yeah. Uh, and five, right? So that's silly enough, that's just 300 foot pounds. And um, let's see, I asked now asked the potential energy uh, at two. So that's going to be MGY2, but plus one half K, and let's say del uh, uh, two squared. So now we have, um, once again, 
60 and uh, after it's moved down uh, that distance uh, did I do that out yeah I should have done that out somewhere at y2 yeah I say it's two feet but I should I should be able to find that somewhere right maybe I did that earlier Yeah, I should do, uh, what I should do is I should find what this height is going to be right here, this uh, Y2. And that should be really like 5 minus uh, 6 uh, times the sine of 30, right? And that should, the sine of 30, it turns out to be 0.5, right? So, uh, I don't memorize that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that comes out to be 2, sure. But I really should have calculated that somewhere in here. Oh, no, I do. Right there, dummy. Yeah, okay. And then um, one half the K of this thing is 12. And the amount, it's going to stretch six feet. That's a long string, a spring to stretch. Uh, so that's 396 foot pounds. And then um, we can figure out what the kinetic energy is going to be because we're going to write out our main equation don't okay there you go you write out that the ke1 plus pe1 plus u1 to 2 is equal to ke2 plus pe2 so we could just say the kinetic energy at 1 is going to be a uh, zero right we should probably written that at the very top um and then we had uh 300 and then this is work added to it 384 we have kinetic energy two and uh then we have the potential energy of uh 396 so the kinetic energy at two is just ends up being um 348 and now if we want the uh, velocity at the center of the wheel right we're going to have to get that kinetic energy and again i didn't leave myself enough room because it's like uh why would I, why would i have left myself enough room why wouldn't i have just planned this whole thing out and gotten to the correct slide where'd you go come on and uh, kinetic energy though at 2 is going to be uh, 1 half I omega squared omega 2 squared uh, plus 1 half uh, mass of the thing times the velocity uh, at the center squared um, and I think I should have gotten what the I was going to be of this thing. It's just going to be mass times, and did I use K? Did, what, what symbol did I use? Did I use anything for the um, radius of gyration? A lot of times that K gets confusing. I didn't use a, uh, a thing. On here I did, though. Um, did I use... Um, I did use that silly K. It gets confusing, I hear. So, uh, what, what did I, I wrote what did I write down there hub uh, K R ra radius of gyration that was weird weird radius of gyration uh, anyway that K is not the spring that's the radius of gyration really should call it R or something and uh, so that should be like 60 over 32.2 times um and i said it was uh radius of gyration is eight but it's got eight inches so it'd be 12s so it'd be squared 
And so that ends up being 0 0.8282, and these are slug feet squared, is, is what the moment of inertia of the thing is going to be. And, um, and so we go one half 0 0.8282. And the first thing asked for the velocity said so we can solve these in either order that we want to, but because they asked for that one first, um, or I did at least, we should use a little kinematics and uh, relate uh, the velocity of the center to the omega, right? And so that's just going to be um, velocity of two is going to be um, the uh, radius. Uh, ra radius of the hub times omega 2 right here um, and the radius of the hub we remember is going to be um, 6 inches right so it's just 0. 0.5 omega 2 so we have 0. 0.5 what let me turn it the other way Let's write it the other way uh, so there you go, omega 2 is going to be equal to, now just 2 times V2. There you go. Yep, 2 times V2, because that's going to, that would be the omega squared. And then plus 1 half, and then uh, 60 divided by 32.2, and times uh, the velocity squared, right? Yeah, velocity squared, velocity 2 squared. So... Um, we could set that equal to this whole thing can be set equal to our 348 that we just found up above. And so we get the velocity of two is um, going to be 11.60 feet per second. And uh, that's moving downwards that way. They did ask for velocity. So a correct answer requires uh, an arrow and maybe even say that degrees really should put that in there. And then lastly, uh, for the last one, we want to get the omega 2 is going to be equal to uh, 2, uh, um, like right up here, just 2 times V2, 2 times 11.60. So we get that's going to be 23.20 uh, um, radians per second. And we could just assume that they meant that it was we want the vector. So when we get the 23.2 radians per second, we could also say uh, that it's going to be um, go, moving down counterclockwise and make that a vector as well. So um, here's a work in energy. Let's see, we could have done, let's see, other things we could have done in the thing, we could have put some kind of, I don't know, some kind of moment, external moment onto the thing so that we now, um, we had uh, also uh, external work. Uh, um, we could have put a friction in there somehow. A little tough to put the friction in there uh, because it's, uh, uh, we, we usually don't use the friction, at least in our kinds of problems when we have that rotation. Uh, we, we could have said the, the friction created a moment. Right, that, then that, that could, that we, we would say something like that. Maybe there was friction in the, maybe there was a bearing or something in there. There's friction in the bearing that caused a, a certain amount of moment or something along those lines. Um, okay, how do we know the way the arrow goes? Um, well, I think the easiest way to do that, if you ever have a question, is to try the instantaneous center of rotation if you possibly can, right? Um, so it, 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 ICR is really helpful. So if we're on a slope right here and we have, there's the hub and here's the wheel, we know the ICR, we, we know the velocity is right there. It's the center. And right there is the, um, uh, uh, the dis we, we know the point of contact without slipping is going to be the instantaneous center of rotation when it comes to a wheel. So we can confirm that it has to be going uh, counterclockwise. Make a sense?
All right, so let's see. Um, scrolling up there, we want an angular acceleration problem. Um, so do you mean by that the kind, the, um, see, I got to move my mouse over here. Uh, I don't have any of those up there, do I? I'll go down here later. Do you mean uh, an acceleration problem like here, or do you mean one of those ones where we're just doing, um, where something is, is on a fixed point and it's spinning up and it's spinning down, or, or it has something uh, uh, tied to it like belts and that kind of thing? Antonio. Did I skip over anybody? Like the problem on page 13, on page 13 of the final review. So I don't have them numbered the way that you do. I have, I, I didn't print them out because so, I, I, I'm, I'm moving, changing them around. Let's see, I'll, I'll go to that page and see which one you're talking about. Uh, to, to exam prep, right? you probably answered my question. I could just go look and see what you just said, but I'll, I'll, I'll go to here and practice problems. And because so, somebody else already referred to them as a page number, so I should probably just see what you mean. Oh, come on, man. Oh, this guy. Oh, that's the one you mean. Okay. That one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I was on another page and I couldn't see what, what the, the chat was right there. Okay. And by the handwriting, I can see this is my good buddy, Sean Munnis. My wife says that, uh, you know, anyway, <laughs> I, I'm a real big fan. This guy I worked with uh, at Coast Guard Academy, he was just, just a brilliant guy, and we got along, like, really well. Uh, it's, it's really nice when you when you have people that uh, you just hit it off with and you have a good working relationship. But anyway, um, we had a lot of mutual respect. He went on, he, he left the Coast Guard. He was, he was only a lieutenant, which that sounds kind of like condescending, but I was lieutenant commander, so <laughs> I can look down lieutenants. And I, I was much older. Um, but uh, I respected the hell out of that guy. And um, he went to go work for Tesla. It was pretty cool. It turns out, though, he didn't like it. After about two years, he left, but... Uh, but he worked with, he worked directly with Elon. I mean, this guy had two uh, master's degrees from MIT, one in mechanical and one in uh, naval architecture, marine engineering. Uh, got him at the same time. It is a brilliant dude. Anyway, um, let me see. I just started doing the problem without talking about it. At a given instant, slider block B is traveling to the right with a velocity and acceleration as shown. Ta-da. Maybe I can learn from my uh, previous uh, experiences and make this thing smaller. Because it doesn't need to be projected up onto a screen, so you'll totally be able to see it. I just discarded a lot of that shit. But anyway, hopefully nobody will uh, mind. Are we still recording this? Let me double check that. Well, I got this thing down. Yeah, 53 minutes into it. And boom. Okay. So add a, um, it's going at six inches per second to the right and accelerating to uh, three inches per second to the right. And we want to determine the angular velocity of it using the method of instantaneous center of rotation and uh, determine the angular velocity of the wheel, omega, and then determine the uh, angular acceleration of the wheel at this instant. Okay. So, well, it turns out that this is like one of those trick questions when it comes to this, we'll see. We could, I'll, I'll draw it on board on here, but we can see that if um, we want to draw the uh, instantaneous center of rotation, we want, to, we want to go and take the line that's perpendicular to the velocity at B and then take the line that's perpendicular at A. And it's really, really easy to fall into this trap. Is that the ICR? You can tell by the tone in my voice. It's not. That's not the ICR. That's the direction the velocity is likely to go we would draw a line that's perpendicular to it. Ah, look what we just found. The ICR is infinite. Therefore, no rotation. 
This answer is zero, you tricky bastards. Well, no, this guy's zero. No, wait a minute. Yes, that one's zero. This one, however, right, if we do that, uh, if we draw the, um, the, the bar over to the side, we could see that it's, this is the velocity of uh, B, and this is the velocity of A, and of course they have to equal each other because there's no rotation. Therefore, we could find uh, from the wheel velocity of a is going to be equal to six inches per second right but he's got an angular velocity I just call him a right here so V a is equal to Omega a times R a so Omega a is equal to V a over R a and so that's going to be uh, six um, inches, uh, six inches per second. And let's hope that this thing is in inches. Uh, the radius you could barely read it. It'd be nice if you made that a little larger. That's five inches. So that's going to be one point two radians per second. And we know that it's going to be a uh, clockwise. So if we were being good, we would write that out 1.20. Give it three sig figs, please. Um, okay, and now we want to do the uh, angular acceleration. So that's the acceleration problems are a little tricky, but don't be intimidated by them. We just methodically go through there. What's good practice is to try to figure out the things that we know. And something that we know easy enough is any time that we have the angular acceleration excuse me the angular velocity we can find the normal acceleration right so the normal acceleration of the wheel is going to be uh, uh the down in that direction right that's going to be um i could have just drawn it on top of this right but i'll try it on top of theirs okay so there's the a of let's call it b with respect to o or whatever normal it's really just the normal acceleration uh, right here um it's going to be equal to that omega b uh squared times rb right or writing that somewhere we get it 7.20 and i guess i went ahead and jump the gun i should actually put the numbers in zero zero squared times our five five and then ends up being seven point two zero zero uh uh inches per second squared downwards that'll be helpful to us and we can kind of guess maybe mm. i i guess i can guess let me see if i guessed uh correct I didn't. I don't have this written out very well. I didn't print it thing out right anywhere. But we have um, V B uh, with respect to O, which is really just V B squared right here is going to be um, not squared, but t to the T. It's going to be the acceleration of B times the radius of B. That's something we don't know. Then we take the um, uh, uh, the acceleration diagrams, three diagram method here. And we take the, whoop, don't do that. Accelerations that we know. We know the acceleration of B. We don't know this acceleration. I'm assuming it's going to the right. I got to be careful with that. But if I, but, but I just be careful. If I get a negative, then I know I did something wrong. Um, actually, a lot of times I will just leave that alone. I won't commit to it, uh, but I do know that I have the acceleration of, um, I called this the, uh, the wrong thing here, and you guys let me do it. Let me fix all of these. This is A 
Um, where else did we go wrong here? Okay, got A. This is A. This is A. Um, this is A. 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 Did anybody else wrong here? All right. Sorry about that. So often, they're lettered the other way. Um, so there you go, the acceleration of A, uh, but, but that's all, um, I should say Y, right? Which we happen to know that this is A, A, Y. It's equal to that right there. It's just like this one right here is A, A, X is equal to the tangential one right there. Um, so we know B, so let's use that one at both places. And then let's pin it at the place that we know. And um, we could put in on our other accelerations onto this. We, we can say, um, I'm going to, what's the way to do it right here? Made a guess of this acceleration right here. And that's the acceleration of AB. That means that I have and and I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room. Would have been nice of me. A A with respect to B in the tangential direction, right there. Um, and yeah, okay. What is going to be that direct? Is going to be right here. Uh, I didn't work out what my angles were, so I got to be a little careful of that. Uh, maybe it'd be a good place somewhere up here, somewhere along the line of uh, taking a look and seeing what this angle is going to be. So we have, uh, this is actually ends up being 10 inches and the hypotenuse is 12 inches. So if we were going to take this and maybe I'll go beta and beta is going to be um, the inverse cosine, nope, inverse sine. of 10 over 20. I think we could guess that, right? Isn't that going to be 30 degrees? 10, 20, 0. 0.5. Yeah, I know. Isn't that stupid? Yeah. 30 degrees. Duh. So, um, looking down at that, the way I have it, it's going to be right here. This is where the angle is going to be, that angle beta. That 30 degrees is going to be stuck down in there. So I could go with the X direction is going to be the Y direction is actually going to be my better bet to start off with the Y direction because I know everything in the Y direction, right? I know what this guy is. So um, I take the, uh, I will write out the equation, right? So we're doing it for A. The acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of um, a with respect to B tangential plus A with respect to B normal. But we know because the angular velocity is uh, zero, no rotation right here, that that goes to zero. That's a simplification that helps us out. So we'll write out this thing in, I just said I was going to do it in the y direction because we know everything. We know everything in the y direction, so that's good for us as a strategy. Um, I'll just use numbers. 7.200. And let's make it negative because let's go up and down positive right here. All right. So that's going to be um, equal to, and B has is, is completely horizontal. So that's going to be zero. That's what's nice of us. And then... Um, We'll also take a look at the acceleration of A with respect to B in the tangential direction, but only in the vertical part of it, right? So we know that that's going to be um, it, A with respect to B tangential is going to be equal to alpha AB times LAB, which was 20 right here, right? And uh, the, the Y direction component is negative, right? So we take... Um, our alpha AB times our 20, and but it's only going to be the cosine 
of our 30 degrees. And did I do that right? Yeah, negative, negative. Okay. And so that ends up being alpha um, AB. Let me, um, I didn't, the way he wrote it out was going to be different. 7.2 divided by 20 divided by the cosine of 30. I get, boom. Yeah, okay, so we never wrote it out. Um, I believe this is going to be right, unless I did some stupid math thing wrong. Radians per second squared. And it's negative, negative, yeah. So I got, I picked it correctly as counterclockwise, and then in the x direction, um, we don't know which direction it is. So I'm just going to assume that it's going to be um, positive, right? Just to make it, a, you know, just you could just draw it in there if you wanted to, but just make it positive. So that's a b is positive. And that's going to be our three inches per second squared. And in terms of our uh, um, tangential one right here, we see that that too, as drawn, is going to be the negative direction, right? That component would be, I'll just do it in yellow, like that way right there, be like that opposite from there. So that's going to be negative. That alpha we just got 4.798 times the length 20 but now times the sine of 30 degrees and so what we're left with is see times 20 times 30 times the sine of 30 times uh that was stupid yeah it was 10 and then it's going to be minus 3 okay so i end up with a uh negative is that true? I'm a little concerned by that right there. I'm getting a different answer. Him, you know what? I might have gotten. Um, is there any chance he was wrong on this? I think I. I think I messed something up here. Yep. So that's what you get for not reading. Just read the thing, but he did it just a little slightly different than I would have done it. Uh, so that was the 7.2 divided by 20 uh, divided by 30 cosine 30. Yeah, don't know what I did wrong. 4157, right? So. Zero point four one five seven times 20 times the sine of 30 right and then I subtract out so okay so I get a negative 1.157 um, this is inches per second squared and then uh, if I had left myself a little more room I could go back up onto here and I could see this is actually going to be in this direction right there right and so then I would find that alpha of my I guess I call it alpha a is going to be equal to my um, acceleration of uh, of a in the x direction which is actually the tangential direction divided by r uh, of a yep I'll, I'll explain that here um and so we get uh, 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 1.157 divided by 5, and we should get our point 2, 314 uh, radians per second squared. And uh, the, the, so now right up here is the full answer, right? And we can see that it was actually um, uh, counterclockwise. Gosh, darn poison ivy. All right, so when looking at um, the uh, IC, looking for the ICR, um, I'm trying to find some blank space. Okay, yep. Um, 
we know this direction, right? We have this V uh, B right here. So we can draw a line perpendicular to it, if we can get the stupid pen to work. Here's the line that goes perpendicular to that velocity. But we also know that if the wheel is spinning and it's we're at that top point right here, that it has to go along this line, right? I mean, it depends whether it's the wheel is spinning to the left or spinning to the right. It depends on which way, it's, if it's going to go left or right. But we know it has to be horizontal. So it has to be this way. So its, IC, its line that would pass through the ice area has to be right there. And because they go together, right, because they never touch each other, that means the ICR has to be infinite. And the only way that that could possibly happen is if the thing is in pure translation. And therefore, there's no omega it has to be zero. Omega has to be zero. Does that make sense, Nick? No problem. Um, okay, so I uh, got a request for the last problem, which I don't know what order they're in on the um, the thing that you have. Ah, a mass moment of inertia problem, is that right? Okay. Is that even in my packet? It is not in my packet. Well, I'll have to just figure it out then. Um, all right, where did where'd you go, mouse? Oh, you're over on the other thing. I'll keep it for now in case somebody asks something I'll later back it, go back on it. Um, computer is slowing down. And so is the professor. Ah, as my good friend Alicia wrote out the solution to this one. She liked to have these tables of stuff. All right, so at least we know we're going to be able to know um, what what the uh, the answer is going to be. Let me let me uh, uh, copy this and uh, bring them back up to here. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, I got to right click and can I, can I just paste it? Sure, okay. Yeah, that might be enough space. All right, so with the, we want the location of the center of the mass. And it really is uh, um, a lot easier to use a table for most things that have, like, if it has three parts or more, I use a table. But a lot of times that might be just unnecessary if you just had two parts. But if I, yeah, somebody asks you for a table, then you make a table. Um. So uh, if we wanted to uh, get, get the mass of the piece, like is this one of these guys? Oh, yeah, it's got a total mass of two. These are such a pain in the ass. I always hated this thing. So uh, I actually have to think out loud. When you do that, I'd rather uh, create like a density for myself uh, and, and think of it in those terms. That's just not it's just not the way that my mind works. Uh, to figure out like so if you uh, know what the uh, like you can get a, an area density if you wanted to and so sometimes that's the way that I would approach this I would say that the um, the, the total area of this thing was going to be uh, equal to or we could just take it as a partial ratio or anyway I would say that we go pi over 4 um, 200 squared minus 75 squared right like I, I never ask for questions this way because I just don't like them but there, there's there's like a I, I don't remember off the top of my head what the um, method uh, that's uh, it's kind of it's convenient uh, is to um, 
uh, uh, go through this without having to actually do this part of it here. But this is my, it's a necessity thing. All right, so uh, the area of this is um, 27,000. It almost be better to do it in, in meters, but I go 27,000 millimeters squared. And so I'm going to create this density for myself. That's going to be uh, that mass divided by the area. So this is like an area density. You could assume that it has, it's like one millimeter thick, right? And then make it a real density. But then I would say that's going to be that divided by uh, uh, or the inverse of that right there. So 7.408. Um, of the thing and um, you know now that I'm thinking about it if you could if you consider it to be a uniform density we can just find the uh, the centroid of the thing and that's going to be the same thing as the center of mass so what I just did was kind of unnecessary but that's okay um, and so but no it actually it would be kind of useful so uh, I, I could find um, the uh, uh, um, you know the, the if I we know it's going to be along this line right here the center of mass uh, and it's probably going to be a bias to be down here because that's where the, the it's we, we're removing space from up here. That's going to shift the center of mass down. So we could take the sum of the masses times the individual y distances uh, divided by the um, sum, the total sum of the masses. But since the density is going to be the equal to each other, that that would be like the same thing. Is the sum of the and the thickness is the same the sum of the areas and uh, so the the area so so what we do is we would take uh, the area of the top so you know we notice that those go away um, and take uh, the area uh, of uh, of the individual ones we go Pi over four times our two hundred squared, but that's going to be times zero, right? Because we're going to use uh, O as the um, as the reference point, right? So we can measure everything from O. So that doesn't do anything. So we go minus uh, pi over four times uh, seventy five squared. And its distance is going to be a 100. And then divide it by, that's just going to be that, the total area, what I just calculated over there, right? The pi over 4, uh, 200 squared minus 75 squared. Um, if we do that, we get 75 squared 100 times pi times 4 divided right here. And so what I th think I'm going to do, and then I get 27,000 here, 27,000. And so I get a negative 1.636. Uh, Millimeters, is that right? No, no, I get 16. 16.36, is that what she said? Uh, uh, six, yeah, it's negative 16 right here. So that's that's where we, we get that uh, center. And then uh, for the mass moment of inertia, um, that, again, that's that's a lot easier a lot of times in a table. We, we could have done, I could have done that in a table as well. Um, so uh, I ask for, uh, um, we can call this part one and this part two. All right. So uh, we take um, the I of, um, and we want it about the axis. We want it about the axis, right? Okay, so we want it about the O. So that, that actually helps us out. So um, I of O is going to be I um, one uh, minus I two, but plus M two times the distance it has to move right here. So from this distance to right here. So I'll go this like 
I don't know. We could call it something like uh, uh, I don't know. Just call it D for right now. It's the easiest thing to remember. Um, so uh, both of these are going to be discs. So it's going to be one half m r squared right there. So right. So we find um, and the mass of this thing. Um, like I said up above, I wanted to do a density of the piece. So I could say that the mass of one was going to be equal to uh, the area of one, right? So the, to uh, uh, the, to the area of one is going to be pi over four, uh, 200 squared times my um, density of 7.408 E minus five, right? Um, which is going to be 200 squared pi times 4 divided right there, yeah, times, so that's going to be 2.327 uh, kilograms, and therefore we know that M2 is of course is negative 0 0.327 kilograms and so i go one half um 2.327 0 0.2 squared minus um one half 0 0.327 it'd be nice to have another sig fig right in there but that's uh, that's not a Actually, I could do it right here. Boom. 373. Anytime you can eliminate some source of error, it's a good idea. And I guess I decided to do it in millimeters. I, I, I didn't tell you what the units it were, but most of the time you want kilogram meters. You don't want millimeter. Uh, kilogram meter squared, not kilogram. Kilogram meter squared, not kilogram millimeter squared. Uh, mush mouth. Uh, 0 0.1. Squ not 0 0.1 squared, 0 0.75, 0 0.7, 0 0.075, dummy, 0 0.075 squared plus, now I'm not going to have room now, 0 0.3273 times the distance, which is 0 0.1 squared. And so it wouldn't kill us to get in between numbers here. So we got um, 0.2 squared times 2 divided uh, 4.655e to the minus 2 is what that is. Uh, this part right here. Point zero seven five squared times two divided, and I get uh, nine point two zero five e minus four, and I'm going to add that to point one squared point three two seven three multiply by it, and that should be zero point no no, I could just do that in my head dummy. Uh, 3.273 e to the minus 3. So you add those two together, but you subtract it from there, and we get an I O, uh, I about O of 4.235 e to the minus 2 kilogram meter squared. Tell me I got it right. There you go. And let's see, what did she do as a thingy? Oh yeah, she did. Oh, she likes to. She she always enjoyed that. Yeah, that's her. That's her modus operandi is to keep things like those, like fractions. I think it's a University of Rhode Island thing. She went to University of Rhode Island, got her PhD there. So, in ocean engineering. I miss Alicia. She's a good coworker. Any uh, more questions, requests? 
How are we doing on time? Is it, uh, we've been here for about an hour and a half. We can keep it for now. I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Uh, an hour and 24 minutes worth of recording. And look at that little, look at the little wheel of death. What is going on with you? Oh. Okay, it's trying to save it, that's why. So I should have this uh, uh, loaded up on my phone all the time right here while I'm out doing this online uh, teaching right here. Right? So I should uh, just play like a little Pink Floyd. Is there anybody out there? That's a good. That's a good song. Is there anybody out there? Huh? Is there anybody out there? Let's see. It's a Pink Floyd song, "Off the Wall." Maybe you're familiar with "The Wall." It's a great album. You can hear me, right? Hello. Is there anybody in there? Just not if you can hear me. Is there anyone at home? So I'm singing comfortably numb now. Uh, okay, give me a give me give, give me a request request. Stop singing. That's a good request, right? I'll start playing guitar if you don't watch out. Projectile motion, something. Okay. Oh, ready. So I, sometimes I can confuse myself on a projectile motion problem. Let's see. Um, I'll pick one of the guys from. I can't. I can't keep losing my mouse, man. Oh, did I did I close down Edge? I did, didn't I? I'll cheat. I'll pick one of these guys. No, you dummy! Just close it down. I can't open. I have my key. I don't have my keyboard accessible to me right now at this moment. And when I try to use this little guy down here, it gets all fudgy up on me. But I was going to pick one of her in this. I, uh, uh, e D. Come on, right in there. E D. You bastard. Come on. E. I'm pressing down, you bastard. E. You are such a jerk. All right, so uh, projectile motion where the path is known. Projectile motion where the thing is known. See, see, it does that. You, you son of a gun. I just wish things would go the way that I want them to go all the time. Why can't I just hit my, get my way all the time? There you go, edge. Microsoft Edge, there you go. I don't like Microsoft Edge, but. There you go. All right, so we have a projectile motion problems here. You could go, so let's see, we'll open in a new tab, open in a new tab. Um, here, just picking ra random ones here. See, so st stuff you could choose from. Uh, the path is known. Ooh, parametric. I wonder what the hell they mean by that. Well, let's see. Let's see what they mean. All right. So let's see what they mean by this parametric one. Nah, you don't want to do that. I mean, we could, but all that is is just uh, taking the derivative of, uh, of of the equation that the thing moves. I don't know if you really call that a projectile motion problem. I don't know why he's calling it that. Right here. See, does he mean the same thing over here when he does that? Yeah. I mean, it's true. It's definitely something that you know. If you if you you had uh, two different, if you have 
uh, two different equations right here. It says, sure, you could um, plug them in and you could take the time derivative of them and you then you could find uh, uh, what those are. But um, uh, here's another one where we, okay, that's the what he's, that's what he means by the path. Okay, yeah, that's another one where he means by the path. It's not really projectile motion. It's projectile motion. Uh, although, yeah, you got something like this right here. Okay, so we got this bird uh, carrying a juniper berry, suddenly releases the juniper berry. Uh, so the bird is coming up at uh, 10 meters per second. So the berry is coming up and it's going to land. And so you want to like predict where it's going to land. Um, and if you had the G wrong, right? So this guy, he takes off three points if you get the acceleration of gravity wrong out of 25. I don't know. Seems that's got a little on the mean side. Uh, we got this kicker right here. Alternate approach, clever. So let me um, uh, work my way through this right here. So I will um, come back over to here and let's pick him out and do him. Because there was two approaches. So instead of me reading to you the approach, let's see, I will walk through it. Some learning to be had there. Just get the stupid computer to do something I want to do. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. Come back over here. Let's see what the little picture looks like because the picture helps. I have a really crazy projectile motion problem that was just evil that I did um, in my book. E it's evil. All right. So, in most of the time, the, the thing that we care about the most in projectile motion is that we have two things going on at once. We have something going horizontal and we have something going vertical. So, in the horizontal direction, its x is going to be equal to the original x plus the velocity, original velocity in the x direction times time. But we also have the, the y position is going to have this uh, equation here original velocity in the y direction times time minus one half g t squared and so what we could do the videotape of a football player kicking the long field goal is observed that the ball traveled 185 feet to the goal post right here and um he's going to protect you he, he, he we're going to pretend like he's kicking it off the ground i think the ball was in the air 2.8 seconds. Find the initial velocity of the ball and the angle at which it was kicked. Okay, so um, what we do here is we could just find what the time is going to be, right? We could we could just figure out what the uh, velocity in the x direction is going to be because we know time and we know the distance that it moved, right? 185 is equal to 0 um, plus VOX times that time, which was 2.8 seconds. So what we're left with is the VOX was going to be, um, uh, 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 one second, let me think, uh, uh, it's going to be 185 divided by 2.8. Um, which isn't hard to do, right? So he gets uh, 66.07 um, uh, uh, feet per second. Yeah, sure. And then in the y direction, uh, well, we could do the same thing. Um, do we know the field goal oh wait hmm oh to where it hits the ground boom 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 okay duh 
So um, all we all we needed to do was to uh, find um, well y is o and y zero are going to be equal to each other, right? Uh, plus v o y times t minus one half thirty two point two uh, times t squared right here. Um, and then so v o y and and I, I wasn't looking at the solution just now as I was doing this I was riffing but then I just took a peek just now and I actually was doing I think the alternate way um, so uh, uh, but anyway um, you notice that time cancels out or one of the times cancels out and so what we're left with is uh, um, it's going to be uh, two not two one half, dummy, thirty-two point two divided by two times our two point eight. Is that going to get me the th same thing? I better two point eight two divided thirty-two point two uh, times. I get forty-five point eight point zero eight feet per second, and then uh, so we're going to have vo is going to be the square root of 66.07 squared plus 45.08 squared and get 79.9999999999 probably is it probably turned out to be 880 and then the theta of that's going to be the uh, the y over the x, right? No, it's going to be rise over run. That doesn't make sense. It's going to be. Why is he? He's going to, he makes it seem. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rise over run, inverse tangent. Right. It, it suddenly I got him. I was just thinking of him backwards. Rise is this is is the y. The decimal place sixty six point zero seven. 45.08, 66.07 divided inverse tangent, 34.31 degrees. So, um, and that's what he was asking for right there. So there you go, boom and boom. Uh, the other way that he did it, I did the same way as me. All right, so there's the clever one. The clever way is... He did. He found that sixty-six. Yeah, no, it's the same way. No, I don't know why he said. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring it back over. I'll show you what I mean. Would it not let me bring that over? Why wouldn't it do that? You can keep it. I don't care. Oh, I guess. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I'm so confused. The mouse doesn't like it when you try to drag something from one screen to another. But he was saying, these look the same to me. Why did he say clever next to this one? I mean, this is what we just did below, right? So really, you should do one more that's more challenging, but the, you can you can make them too challenging. A, um, a, they can uh, projectile motion can get kind kind of uh, uh, nasty. Um, sometimes you have to use. I'm going to say this the right way. You have to use like a half angle in identity. It's so when you have to find the angle. Sometimes that could be uh, kind of annoying. I'll try to see if I can find. Uh, uh, this myself. Let's see if I can bring him over here. Uh, I've never asked this question. I'm not going to ask this question. It was just kind of a dirtbag move to do. Um, oh, I know I could show. Yeah. Go to the, just go to this guy and go to the engineering dynamics course companion and go to. I could open my, I want, uh, the manuscript will take a time to load up. We could go to draft and go to, uh, what would be class one? Oh, I don't know now.
No, of course not. Class three. And kinematics of particles. Dragging, dragging, not letting me. There you go. See? And hey, bro, my projectile motion problems. Here's a, here's my new version of Newt Dog. I drew him a, like a little, make it look a little slicker. Um, although I don't really like the way that looks. I think they were able to make it look better in in, in the print right here. But I go and I just you could find that there's actually two different angles or two different. Oh, here you have two different velocities to be able to land it into the thing. You know, like so if you found one is 45 degrees and one's 30 degrees that you could get you could land something in the same spot. Right. And here. So the strategy is that we replace the time. We resolve we solve uh, this equation in the x direction for time. And place it inside the y direction uh, right here. So we replace all the time everywhere with uh, this. And then we end up with um, an equation uh, that looks like this, which is always interesting to me that the, 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 the VOs cancel out right here. So the, And they get the sine divided by the cosine, so that you just have the tangent like right in there. But then you can solve for VO as part of that, and you don't have to use a quadratic equation. And you can just get this equation and then just plug stuff into it. Um, looks to me like I might have left something out right there and looks no I guess it's just a couple spaces or something anyway that you can uh, uh, so so now you have this is really just the equation of a uh, you know the, the using the geometry of the thing and so when you have a different angle that you're sending uh, putting the thing in there yeah there's something that needs to go inside there, there there's there's missing something right there damn it's only something but I had, um, and there's me just plotting the thing out. I had like an evil problem. Okay, well, we talk about relative motion. Here's the evil problem. We had the relative motion, and now, now, um, yeah, so we got these two boys, and uh, they're brothers. I think they're brothers. Yeah, they're brothers, right? And they're shooting basketballs, and they shoot with the same velocity right here, and it lands. And um, we want to know that the, what, what makes it evil is it's a multi-step problem. But we want to know where the what the position of one of them is going to be when the other one lands, right? So um, so what is the relative velocity of B uh, to ball A when the ball hits the the hoop? And again, this would be like just just the meanest of problems to 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 like assign for a uh, for an exam. Because it really would, it really would mess with your head for a little while, but um, you get a lot, a lot of the same things going on, right? A lot of the same ideas uh, where you, you you just replace um, that uh, uh, those equations, right? You just stick one of those equations inside the other equation. But now, if you want to solve for uh, theta right here, right? If you want the angle, the theta, you need to remember this one identity that isn't necessarily something that you would rem remember. Because you, you have cosine squared on the bottom, uh, cosine of theta squared on the bottom, uh, but then you have tangent of theta up here. So the way that you want, you want to do is recognize that that one over cosine squared is equal to secant squared, and that secant squared is equal to one plus tangent squared, right? And so what you could do is you now you can put tan, one plus tangent squared here. Now, if you notice, we have a tangent of theta and a tangent squared of theta. So we can use the quadratic equation to find, and I just set it equal to z, right? I just said that the tangent of theta is equal to z, just so, so it didn't look quite as ugly. And so we have this thing right here is the quadratic equation. And now we can solve for z, and we get two different answers. Right. And so these are the two different angles that the brothers can shoot the ball at and and get 
uh, uh, and, and for it to make the basket, right? And it didn't matter what the, you know, well, the initial velocity was something uh, uh, that we, okay, no, the, no, we, he, they did, we did know the initial velocity. Initial velocity was given. So uh, add that velocity, there's two separate angles that we could shoot it at. So uh, what, then, then what you do is you could find the time when one, uh, when one of them is going to reach the basket. And you know the one that's actually with the, with the smaller angle is going to reach the basket first. The other is like do, do, shooting out a big rainbow, right? So one's more like, you know, you, you're throwing almost you're throwing more closely directly towards the basket. And the other is you're throwing up this big arc, right? And they both are going to reach the basket with that same initial velocity. But the, the one that with the smaller angle is going to reach it first. So you can find what that time is going to be based on the X displacement in that uh, using the cosine right there. And then you could figure out what the um, what, what the velocity components are going to be at that at, at that time, right? For one thing, the x com the x component is always the same, but now we need the vertical component of of that at that time. Um, yes, at that time, right? So we could could we figure out that time? At the same time, what you could do is you could figure out the vertical the components of uh, the ball B at that same time and now you could turn them into vectors right you could have the vector of a you know what that thing looks like and you have the vector of b you know what that looks like because we have the components of them and now we can get the relative velocity uh, between the two and we can get what the angle is so here's what that means Here, here's what what they were asked uh, where they it was me i invented this problem um, because I was trying to like combine something that would make, uh, I was trying to write a book that has a lot harder examples into it because students complain all the time that the examples are easier than the homework, right? And then quite often the law also complained that the exam was harder than the homework, which it, it, I, I tried to, my very best to make sure that's never true. Um, but it could be true. There's definitely, I've had lots and lots and lots of professors who made, um, the exams much harder than the, um, the homework. I've had lots of professors that never finished an example in class and uh, never really uh, uh, gave, never graded our homework and then gave us an exam. And you can now be playing the world's smallest violin if you'd like to. It's totally up to you of what kind of instrument you'd like to play. So um, we're, we're, we're working down. We're, we're close to two hours here. Um, what, what, uh, any, any more, what do you got, you got, you guys got more you're, you, 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 how, how's your endurance going right here? My hand hurts like hell. Poison Ivy. Why did poison Ivy happen? Like, how did it occur? Okay. Now, whether you're, uh, depending on your belief system, right? Uh, you can believe in evolution or you can believe, uh, you know, creationism either way. How does poison Ivy exist? What evolutionary principle caused poison Ivy to happen or if there's a uh you know a guiding um uh, all-knowing um uh entity uh why would they uh create poison ivy is what i want to know it protects itself it, it adapts the poison ivy adapted but i'm just wondering like okay well it has this minor adaption and then time goes by and then i guess people didn't rip it out of the ground people didn't eat it I don't know. It just seems to me that it's like, it's just a bad joke. It's just nature playing a bad joke on us. Maybe it's the same reason why I have coronavirus, right? I don't know. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. So topical. This has nothing to do with uh, dynamics. But you, you get me talking for too long. Extra credit on the final. That's an, I, I love that idea. Um, are you asking if the finding out why poison ivy is um, is bad as extra credit on the final? <sighs> There's no definitive answer. Um, I think the only way that I could uh, I think is if it amused me, right? That would be the. But I think I'd rather put extra credit on the final where we actually deal with dynamics in some way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, tr I try. I try to be fair, as, as fair as I can. So, um, anybody got any requests? Uh, we could probably do another problem if you want to. 
The tangles they form also serve as shelter. And incidentally, most animals are not affected by their irritants. Okay, so here's what scares me is that my daughter insists she is not allergic to poison ivy and has said that she has demonstrated this by rubbing it on herself. And I just, mm, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, there could be different breeds of poison ivy. You just don't necessarily know. But I was planting wildflowers. And maybe that's the poison ivy. That's why it was angry at me, because I was I was trying to plant wildflowers. You, why would you plant wildflowers? Wildflowers, by definition, should be wild. So, I, but I was planting them by the side of our driveway because I thought that it would be, look pretty. So I raked a bunch of the leaves around, and there was a bunch of roots right there of vines. I'm like, shit, I got to get rid of those vines. Didn't think twice of it, and started ripping these vines out of the ground. Guess what? They were poison ivy. Underneath the leaves. I'd never, I know my driveway. Well, I didn't know there was ever poison ivy there. Just leaves. But apparently, it was waiting. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now, now that I have poison ivy, I remember that. I usually do. I usually do. This time, I wasn't. I was out of practice. You know whose fault it was? It was my neighbor. I have a new neighbor. The neighbor right here, I have a long driveway, and this is the neighbor that's right, uh, butts right up against the driveway. His name is Joe. Joe came over and distracted me. Joe just kept talking. And Joe is one of those guys that knows everything. I mean, Joe has been everywhere and done everything. He is, he, he's a, been a conductor in a big band. He's led, uh, he's, he, he's been in charge of like 3,000 people at NASA. He's currently working in an electric boat. Um, Joe, Joe teaches ballroom dancing. Yeah. Always blame it on the neighbor. I could do a rigid body Newton second law problem. Yes, I can. I, I hear what you're saying, Sydney. This is not time to talk a bitch about Joe. I got it. When you get a chance, sure. I got it. You know, no, no, no problem. I'm always getting yelled at. That's all right. I don't, I don't mind. Um, okay. Well, let's go back to Fowler. What's the name? Ben, Bedford and Fowler. That's just got a great name. Bedford and Fowler. And take a look. We could actually, uh, let's see, we got to figure out what chapter that's in. It's probably in the one before this, I'm guessing. Oh, I can't read what you're writing right now. So mm. uh, use Technu for poison ivy. It helps. What is Technu? Is it something that kills the weeds or solves my hand inflammation? I have blisters in between my fingers. I know, that's gross. right? You didn't want to hear that. You could have been eating something. You could be throwing up right now. Yeah, I mean, big blisters. I mean, I can't get my fingers to go back together. Helps wash the oils off your skin. I don't know if it's too late now. It's They're probably like wickedly in, in, in there all over the place. I look like a calamine, um, uh, what, what's the name of that uh, kind of horse that has patches all over it? That's what it looked like. Um, Two-dimensional dynamics of rigid bodies. Momentum principles, derivation applications, energy methods, um, planar. Okay, so I think it's going to be this chapter 7 in here. Um, by the way, uh, something I should, I, I keep always meaning to include this, so to have discussion of what the, the equations of motion, this is a great phrase, but you'll, if you take vibration classes, you'll learn about the equations of motion, but there's an interesting thing, especially as it relates to um, differential equations, the equations of motion, this sounds really important. So we're going to see like page 360, something or other. The equations of motion. Sounds so important. All right here, they oh they like to do this stuff with the cross product stuff. I don't like doing it all that much. Not a big fan of the cross product stuff. That's right. right. Um, chapter summary. Here's a problem. Um, oh, and that's the stuff that we just did. That's planar kinematics. How did I mess this up that much? Thinking about it. Oh, it's 360 something. That's why. Yeah. Uh, some of these might be too hard to do. 
let's see 746 like a couple of these are some of these will be a little too hard to do um See, I don't. I shouldn't do this live because all this kind of stuff can, can drive you a little nuts uh, trying to pick out good problems. It's always like something about the problem that goes, well, that's not very good. It's so like here's one right here: the instant of release, the angular acceleration, and the normal force exerted. So, so this is a classic problem. Like if I was uh, uh, other professors, I might ask this problem, but. There's other things right here. Okay, suppose the ladder here has a counterclockwise angular velocity of one. So let me see if I can find uh, uh, that one in, I think he's going to be chapter 17. I was put on the wrong spot. No, I want chapter 18. When do you know it? Bedford and Fowler, you just... God of my poison ivy list. Oh, look at that. Okay. Get a faster modem. Get children that don't steal your bandwidth. I have very nice kids, actually, by the way. I don't, I don't want to pretend like they're bad or anything. They're, they're, they're nice guys. And what did I say? This guy, he was like in the 33 range. So... Mm -hmm. You could just pause these really quick and find all the answers. To all these. There you go. All right. I mostly just want to know if I get the right answer or not. And I'm doing this for your own benefit because I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to ask, ask a question that you already have the solutions to. That's right. So, rigid by Newton's second law. And I like this one's good because it's very, it's generalized, right? It isn't about a fixed point. The fixed point ones can be just a little too easy. Um, that one's a little trickier. Yeah, maybe make it a little harder. I'm, I, I don't want to make it too hard. It looks, I mean, it's, it's hard to judge sometimes by by what it looks like in the uh, solution manual of how difficult the thing is. But it did give a nice size to it there. All right, so we have this 18 kilogram ladder is released from rest in the position shown. Uh, model it as a slender bar and neglect friction and determine its angular acceleration at the instant that it gets released. So uh, the real important thing when we're doing any of these is to draw you guessed it free body diagram and the inertial body diagram it's so important and when you go to do other classes what I have had feedback from other professors and they said I just wanted to let you know this came they weren't sucking up to me. There's no reason for them to. Why would they? I'm a junior faculty. And they said, I just want to let you know that um, I have your students in my uh, blank class, and they really know their free body diagram. And I'm like, awesome, man. That's great. I am glad to hear it. So what we have here is we um, uh, figure out what the reactions are, and reactions are going to be perpendicular right there, right? So we had to try to do our best to draw these reactions. And we're going to have a weight acting down right there, mg. But then over on the other side here, we're going to have acceleration probably going that direction. 
acceleration probably go in this direction. And I think it seems to me that, that this guy is going to accelerate more than that guy. So we should probably have that. So I alpha m acceleration x m acceleration y. So we use our, uh, and we also, um, as part of this right here, we're going to find out pretty soon that we're going to want to relate what those accelerations are to each other. All right. So, uh, uh, so, so, but we, we'll start off with what we, where we were to begin with and say the sum of the moments about some point. Now, it could be often the best thing to do when you don't have a fixed point is take it about the center of gravity. And uh, uh, when you do that, then you do have uh, one of those special cases here where you have the I g alpha right so the g is right here in the center and maybe it would be behoove me which is a great word Ooh, it'd be great if i could undo that but i gotta draw it again now that was a terrible drawing i could write g it would behoove me to uh, keep track of what um, uh, uh, these things are right here. All right, um, so, and I can um, actually find what that IG is gonna be. Maybe I'll get that out of the way. It's gonna be 1 12th uh, mass times length squared. So 1 12th, 18, length is four squared. Um, they didn't bother solving it for me, by the way. I think it's 1.3333. It seems like that's familiar. Where you have this? 18, 16 times 12 divided. And I got it some, I got 24 now. What is wrong with you? It's 18 kilograms. It's four meters long. Four is 16, no kidding. 18 times, 12 divided, 24. Wow. See, never get it right the first time. Well, how about that? Um, so we, if we take the uh, moments uh, that are happening here, I think it's actually gonna be easier. It's usually easier for me instead of, to, to break things apart anytime I can. And so I am going to uh, have that angle and that guy right there. So I'll go F, B, Y and F, B, X, right? And then I might also want to know uh, just some references uh, right here because this is 20 degrees. Um, so I'm thinking that's 20 degrees. And that right there is 30 degrees. Um, so my FBX is going to be equal to FB times the sine of 20 degrees. And my FBY is going to be FB times the cosine of 20 degrees. And then the distances that I'm dealing with right here. Um, of course, it's going to be to the center of the thing. So that just makes my life even better, doesn't it? And uh, so this is going to be like 60 degrees right here. So uh, as I'm coming through this, and we're going to the center of there. This distance right here is going to be... Um, four times the cosine of 30 degrees. Three point four something or other. Six four. But divided by two, dummy. I should have just took a two. Two point 
two. Uh, and let's see, so the distance right here is going to be um, two times the cosine of uh, 60, which should be 0.5, right? Dummy, one. And uh, this distance right here should be uh, times the sine, two times the sine of 60, which is going to be the same thing, right? 1.732. Damn it. And I'm still plugging it in. 1.732 meters. All right. Uh, got ugly geometry out of the way. So as we're taking a look at the moment over here, uh, we're going to take FA. Um, so we'll just go FA. And we want to make sure we get the correct directions. Plus, so FA is going to be negative times our uh, 1.732. Uh, um, and then we're going to take uh, FBX. So that's going to be, um, and that's positive because it's going counterclockwise. So it's FB times uh, the sine of 20. And then um, also going uh, counterclockwise is FBY. FB, up. Oh, forgot the moment. Do that all the time. Do that all the time. FB sine, this is, this is this, the x direction is going to be 1.732. It's got to be a moment. And then the same thing for here. we got FB times the cosine of 20 degrees, and that's going to be times 1. And that's going to be equal to I of uh, 24 times alpha, right? And then we go... Um, well, we also have two other equations that we could deal with. We could have the sum of the forces in the x-direction, which is mass times acceleration in the x-direction. So it's going to be that direction. So we're going to have that Fa um, plus Fb times the sine of 20 um, is going to be equal to the mass, which is 18, times the acceleration in the x-direction. And then we'll have some of the forces in the... Well, I already used that color, damn it. Go with purple. Uh, some of the forces in the y-direction equals mass times acceleration in the y-direction. And that's going to be only... F B cosine of 20 degrees and on the right hand side oh no we got oh yeah we got negative oh yeah go cool. minus uh, mass times gravity um, which we you know we were throwing numbers in here so we'll do it anyway 18 times 9.81 and that's going to be equal to negative uh, 18 times a, um, and oh, I should have put this a g y. I should have labeled him correctly. A g x. Okay. So so far we have three equations. We have uh, and we have. We don't know f b. FA, we don't know FB, we don't know alpha. Uh, we don't know FA or FB, and now we don't know AGX. Um, we don't know F, and now we don't know, we don't know here, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. Five unknowns. Um, so what we have to do is try to figure out how these things are related to each other. And um, the best way is now through kinematics.
and I prefer to use the three um, uh, diagram method for kinematics and this is, could get a little ugly I'm not gonna lie to you but what we could do here is um, like we could start out we start anywhere we want uh, onto this but uh, we have three different um, accelerations uh, uh, or things that we can try to figure out uh, their relationship to each other uh, one thing that we do know is and what one assumption we can make is that the 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 ladder does not come off of the wall and it does not come off of uh, this so we do know the directions that these things or the the constraints of where these things have to go and and because of the nature of it falling we're we're kind of we kind of know for sure that it's going to be going down that way and it's going to be coming down this way right so we have the uh, the sense of the acceleration of a and we have the sense of the acceleration of b well, i have the direction too it's not a very good place to put it Right, and, and we, we also have that you know we can break the, that into components right there and, and, and uh, separate the thing out. And it's probably easiest to use A as the reference because it's only in one direction. So we could pin it right here, and um, we already are assuming alpha is coming that way. So we have that direction right here. And we can uh, now, uh, we could get what this angle is going to be. I want to check, but I think it's going to be that same angle, that angle right there. Got to be really careful with those, but I'm almost certain that um, it's going to be that angle. So that's going to be the um, acceleration of B with respect to A in the tangential direction. And it's nice of them not to make it, uh, you know, it's going to start from rest, so we don't have any anything in this direction, right? There's, there, there is no uh, normal uh, acceleration of B with respect to A. Um, so, for, uh, so from this, we can, um, I think we can establish, well, we can establish what a relationship is going to be uh, between uh, uh, these points, between um, the, the, excel, the, the acceler, the yeah, between, between these positions right here. And the thing is that we're adding in uh, additional unknowns. Um, but we, but more than it, more importantly, when we get when we get a relationship onto this, we're able to establish uh, a narrow down what the acceleration of uh, g is going to be. That's going to be the important thing that we're going to want to find. The acceleration of g in the x direction. And I'm not going to be able to finish this problem, by the way. It's going to be a little bit of math, and it's going to take. It, I usually have to pour over when, when, when any amount of math in here. I have to sit around and think about it like for a good hour and change. Um, argue with myself back and forth. But we're going to see that it's going, we're going to have the acceleration of g with respect to a. And that's the one that we're going to be able to um, uh, uh, use and replace in with uh, uh, this right here and this right here. Replace those guys because we'll be able to break this down uh, based there and, um, and then have, uh, also have that alpha right there. So that's going, to, that's going to allow us to make this connection between alpha and, and G. And it's really going to be the the it's really this horizontal direction that's going to, going to help us out the most, uh, I believe. But anyway, that's like the process uh, for going through there as a, in a generic problem.
this is too hard. This is too long, long to put on a uh, on an exam. But um, and, and even even in the, the the posted even in the solution that they give, um, you know, they they use a different method than I am. But, um, you know, they really should be doing it. He doesn't use the IBD uh, type of thing. But I, I, think, I really think they should. But they use, uh, uh, you can see here's the, uh, the, the three equations uh, from the uh, equations of motion right here, right? And then up above, we have uh, these, um, th these relationships right there. Uh, to establish so there's the five equations uh, that you have to deal with and they just punt and say it's five equations and five unknowns um, personally I like to show the the math all the way through it but I'll write it up and um, uh, I'll record the solution or or I'll, I'll I'll write up a solution to it all the way through I know that's not satisfying because we ended up with a number How many people I lose? Look at that. I still got 10 people left. Damn. You guys are playing with your dogs, aren't you? But most of the time, um, I, I, I tend to ask a, uh, a question that's pinned. Oh, no, that's not a, a Newton's second law. Here's a, here's a pinned one, right? Where I have this, uh, and the solution is posted uh, to it. Um, here's one that was that isn't pinned, where it does have translation and rotation, um, and, and, and as part of it. So, uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of the. He was one of the rotating faculty. I don't, I don't remember it, but but uh, it was his first year, and he picked out this problem. And the students really struggle with it, but the same ideas apply. You write the uh, FBD and the IBD, and you you do the stuff in the x direction, and you do the stuff about the center of gravity uh, right here. And you know that the friction force right in there is going to be uh, related. And, and you don't want the friction force. So you're able to, like, use this one in the X direction to, to, to avoid finding it. And you, you get these things related. And you also have the um, kinematics. So it's the same ideas. Um, but you methodically pick through the thing and you try to find a, a path to being able to find a solution. It's the same idea, but this one is, you know, quite a bit easier than that ladder problem. But that ladder problem is a classic problem. I have seen instructors ask that in, in other schools and other places. It's a, it's a long problem. That's a long problem to ask on an exam. I, I always time the, t time the exams. And I try to make it so that I can do it myself in uh, half the time that, it, you know, would be allotted for you. It's, it just seems kind of evil to ask a problem that you can't do yourself. Yeah, there's another Newton's second law problem. I wonder how many are on um, uh, this dude's page. Let's see, find him. Bring him back over. He's gonna come back over. You coming back over? No, you're not. Are you? There you go. I don't know. A lot of people don't get a lot. A lot of uh, of course they don't get to here. Let's see. He had um, particle work and energy. Those are work and energy ones. Equations of motion, particles, and rigid bodies. So you got rigid body. So you got general plane motion right here. Spool with a cable. Wheels falling with weights. Slender ball bars fa falling. So let's see. Let's see what he did. Like, you know, and and this, a lot of times they'll they'll make this thing look like wicked easy. What? 
you can see that uh, we have um, some of the things happening. It's nice that it only has one force on here, right? Only, you know, instead of having those uh, uh, two angled forces. I picked a doozy. Um, but you have the, the, the sum of the forces in the um, X direction. Uh, you ended up seeing there's no forces in the X direction, so there's no acceleration in the X direction. That was good. So you could just take the sum of the uh, forces in the Y direction, and you could get the... Um, uh, uh, what, what a, a, a one of one of the equations that you need right here, and then you take the moments and you take it about the normal, and that's nice. Uh, or you know, here we're taking this about the center of gravity. That that helps by taking about the center of gravity. Um, and then you, then you relate the center of gravity with that uh, point at a, and you're able to find uh, uh, extra equations and be able to solve what the accelerations are. Um, So you know the acceleration at A, what it's going to be. And is that what they ask? Find the accelerations of point A and the center of mass G. And uh, here's another bar one right here. He didn't ask any. He didn't. He shows you these as these others, but he didn't do it. The slender ball are falling. Yeah, this is more of a, a pinned. No, I guess it's kind of a pinned problem. Look at that. He uses a matrix to solve the thing. Wonderful matrices, yay for matrices. But if you have a more than one equation, it's good to use a matrix. Uh, we don't really do that as much in here. We got a basic problem, so we have a basic problem right here. And that's the same as uh, um, if no, what does that mean? If no acceleration at a point, if you know the acceleration at a point, great, but must find accelerations at G. G terms and F equals MA equations cannot but put at, I mean, in terms of equations, okay. All right, I am uh, tired, and I've, uh, I think I put my, uh, my time in, two hours and something. Yeah. Two hours and 20 minutes, man. I am D-O-N, Don. No, D-U-N, done. <laughs>